Good morning, Meshack. It's Tuesday, February 9th, and officially the second day of Animal Week. Yesterday, you took us to Australia to talk about the bilby, so today I'm going to take you 10,000 miles away to South America to talk about the capybara. Capybara? Capybara? Capybara. Capybara. Okay, so when I heard that we were doing Animal Week, I was immediately drawn to capybaras, but I wanted to make sure that I could talk about them for a full four minutes. So I typed capybara facts into Google, and what do you know, the first thing that I found on the internet said this, quote, capybaras are essentially the rodent version of the hippopotamus, gnawing their food whilst swimming in the South American swamps. Could I have picked a better animal to start Animal Week off with? I don't think so. I don't think it's possible. Anyways, these little creatures are funky. Not only are they really cute and they look kind of pompous, they're also the world's largest rodent. Now, you might be thinking, Sam, those rodents don't look that big. Well, you're wrong. I've been fooling you. You fool. Look at what these things look like next to humans. They're enormous. They're simply too big. In fact, I'm halfway convinced they're not even real that they're part of a larger capybara conspiracy. Admittedly, I have little evidence besides the fact that they're just too bizarre to be real. Assuming they are real, they're quite bizarre. They are semi-aquatic, which means that they spend a lot of time in the water, have webbed feet, and can even fall asleep right in the water. But they're also quite nimble and can reach a top speed of up to 22 miles per hour on land when sprinting. That's pretty impressive already, but wait until you find out that a grown capybara can weigh as much as a grown human. Part of the reason they grow so large is because they eat their own feces to make sure that they've gotten all the nutrients possible out of the food they've eaten. Speaking of food, when a capybara is born, it will drink milk from any female capybara near it. It doesn't have to be its mother, it doesn't even have to be one that it knows. Just any female capybara capable of producing milk, any nipple that is convenient to it. I guess that's why they call them social animals. Well, that and they operate in herds of up to 40 at a time. And now, my favorite fact about these guys, they're known as nature's ottomans or moving chairs sometimes because they let other animals sit on them. That's right, they let animals hitch a ride. And they walk around like it's no big deal because to them it isn't. There's not much more to that fact, it's just kind of a quirk of evolution. But boy, oh boy, does it bring me joy to watch a little bird sit on top of an aloof capybara just walking around. Plus, capybaras are herbivores, so you don't have to worry about them mauling you to death. And according to the Encyclopedia of Life, their conservation status is of least concern, which means there are plenty of capybaras for the world to enjoy. Please, if you've made it this far into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We upload every weekday, and this week, a bonus video on Saturday. Meshack. I will see you tomorrow. Additional footage of a cute capybara. Please enjoy. It's just kind of sitting there. Like and subscribe. Bye.